Hi guys, welcome back to Rock Fabulous 40s and today I'm going to talk about some new Wet n Wild products that I found at my local Walgreens. And it seems as though that they have taken some of their old really popular Color Icon eyeshadow palettes and have reformulated them and have made new palettes with them. And they have a couple of new highlighters out. I have a new foundation from them. And I think that's really pretty much all I picked up was just some palettes a new foundation and a highlighter. So my whole face today is done in completely 100% Wet n Wild products. I wanted to see if I could actually rock out an entire Wet n Wild look and I think I did okay. So if you guys are interested in like a one brand tutorial using affordable Wet n Wild products, let me know. Leave a comment down below because I would be happy to do that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump right in. Alright, so the first thing I want to talk about is the new foundation that Wet n Wild has come out with. And this is the Mega Cushion Foundation. It has an SPF of 15. And the packaging does say on it that it is a liquid foundation in a cushion compact. It says it's luminous, lightweight, and buildable, and it's a hydrating formula. Now, if I remember correctly, I believe this was $8.99. And I am in the shade, what shade am I? I am in the shade Neutral Beige, and Neutral Beige is just the teeny tiniest bit light for me, but I can make it work. If you guys hear scratching, I have a cat out here scratching at my door, and I have two dogs running around back here in my room. Alright, so the foundation is your typical like cushion type foundation. It does come with the little sponge on it here. I did not use the little sponge. I hate using these. And then it's got this little flip up lid that you can flip up and then there's your cushion with your product. Now I have used this foundation for actually three weeks straight now. And I have tried it with several different primers and several different moisturizers underneath and several different methods of applying, whether it be a brush or a sponge and, and you know, that kind of thing. So here's the product. Let me push in the sponge here. Okay, so that's kind of what it looks like and how it comes out. And you can actually tell by looking at the back portion of the um, compact what the actual color of the product is. And that's one of the things that I really don't like about a lot of cushion foundations is they don't show you the actual product color that's inside the compact. So this is not just a label, a colored label. This is actually a clear bottom with the product in it. So that is the actual product that you're seeing in there. So you can actually see the color of the product before you buy it. And I guess it kind of helps to see also when your product is running low because I can already see that there's some like baldness right there where I've got some product running low, I guess. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. There you go. You see how that's got some like little bald spots there. It does have an SPF of 15. Um, this is a part of their Mega line. This is the Mega Cushion. And I have tried it with several affordable primers. I've tried it with my L'Oreal Pro Glow Primer. I've tried it with my NYX Hydra Touch Primer. I've tried it with some high-end primers. I've used it with my um, Smashbox Hydrating, my uh, Becca Backlight Priming Filter, which is one of my favorites. So actually both of those are, are a couple of my favorites. And I have found that this actually works best with an extremely hydrating primer. I know that they say that this is um, supposed to be a hydrating formula with, how does it put it, a luminous, lightweight, and buildable hydrating formula. So they say that this is a hydrating formula. However, when I apply it, I have to apply it with a very, very damp sponge because if I apply it with a brush, it goes on way too dry. So if I dip my brush in and then try to, you know, uh, blend it onto my skin, it actually dries so quick that I don't really get a very good blend on my skin. So I use my, my damp sponge, a very damp beauty blender, or today I used my Real Technique sponge, and I dip it in and then I pat it all over my face. And that actually worked really, really well. So it does work better with a damp sponge instead of a brush because it does dry so quickly. Once it's on, it looks nice, but it looks dry. 
So once it's first applied, it does not feel hydrating at all. And that's why I'm saying you guys would want to really use, especially if your skin is very similar to mine, which is kind of dry, very dry to combo, um, use a very hydrating moisturizer and primer. And I think that's going to make this, that does actually make this um, seem to go on a little bit easier. Now, like I said, once it's on my face, it is very drying feeling. I don't need to powder it, which I don't powder really anyway, except for under my eyes. Um, but I don't feel the need to powder the foundation. I don't feel it uh, coming off. Like if I touch my cell phone to my face, I don't feel it coming off on my cell phone. It doesn't look like I have a big foundation thing on my cell phone, um, which is good, but it does make my skin feel very dry. Now wearing it throughout the day, it seems to get better throughout the day. Throughout the day, throughout the day, my skin seems to start to normalize, I guess, and you get some of those natural oils that come up. I get them typically just right in the T-zone area, um, and it does start to look better throughout the day. So I did get a pretty decent wear out of this. Um, I've worn it for a full day and through a workout, and when I got home to wash it off, it was still there. It might have broken up in just a couple of places, like right around my nose or right on my chin, but for the most part, it was still there, and it was still it still looked pretty decent, although it did start towards the end of the day. It did start to actually look like little polka dots in my pores, but that didn't happen in probably till about the eighth hour in or so. But up until that time, it looked very nice on the skin. So that is the Mega Cushion Foundation with SPF 15. And now let's jump into... I did put the sponge back in there. Now let's jump into the highlighters. I did pick up two highlighters. These are the Mega Glow Hello Halo highlighters. These little guys right here. And they are glass jars, so you typically want to be kind of careful with them. I'm wearing um, Goddess Glow today, which is kind of a bronzy, ro bronzy rose, maybe a rosy bronze shade. I am wearing that on the tops of my cheekbones today. Okay, and I also have the shade called Hello Goodbye, or Halo Goodbye. Alright, let me go ahead and swatch these guys for you. This one is Halo Goodbye, which is kind of a pinkish pearl type shade. And they do feel a little oily, okay, I'm not going to lie, they feel a little slick. But, you don't, once it's blended into the skin, you don't feel it. It doesn't feel like you have an oil slick on your skin. So that's, you see, it's not a big strong glow. It is a very natural looking subtle glow. Um, let's do the um, goddess glow. And you guys will see it's got like the little doe foot applicator here. And I don't apply it with the doe foot. I actually put the product on the back of my hand. I take my sponge, I dip my sponge in, and then I apply it. Okay, so here's the this one. This one's got just a bit more glow than the other. But again, it is still a very subtle, very subtle glow. So the way that I've worn these is like today, I just have it um, on the tops of my cheekbones and like right here and a little bit on my chin. Um, and I applied it with a beauty blender. So I had it on the back of my hand, dipped the beauty blender in and applied. I have taken this and put it on the back of my hand and put a primer, mixed my primer in with it and used it as a primer all over my face and it did give me a really nice glow under my foundation and it wasn't anything that was too strong or too heavy because you don't use much of it in your primer um, but it did give me a really natural glow to my skin which made my foundation look really nice and it didn't matter which foundation I used over top of it it did look really nice okay so let's move on to the new eyeshadow palettes I'm really excited about these I do have quite a few of them. They Okay, so what they've done is they've reformulated several of their already existing palettes. And they've put them in these new palettes that have an extra shade in them. And some of them, two extra shades in them. Like, for example, let's take the Sweetest Candy. The new one has got four shades. Okay, it looks like this. And the old Sweet as Candy has got three shades. Okay, you guys see here so we've got four shades and we've got three shades here so they're giving you like what they would call a transition shade in the new palettes these guys right here 
Um, these, I believe, were $2.99, and I think that these are the four-pan ones, and then, then I also have the ten-pan ones, and those, I believe, were $3.99. So they were very inexpensive, and I just love that. Also, these new palettes on the little four-pan palettes have got how you can wear the shadows. Now, you don't necessarily have to wear them that way, but it shows you, like, the numbers here. So it'll say, put shadow one on your brow bone, two on your lid. You don't have to wear them that way, but it's just a suggested method of wearing them. And also it says on the actual shadows themselves, on the four-pan ones anyway, it says transition, eyelid, brow bone. I've actually kind of wiped that one off. <laughs> so, and definer. So, I mean, it actually says on them, but I've kind of, like I said, wiped them off. Actually, that one says crease, not definer. But I've used them quite a bit. I've been using these shadow palettes now for three weeks to a month, and I've worn them almost every single day. And I've got some, most of them are good. Most of them are really good. All right, so we're going to start with um, these little four pan palettes. So with the Sweetest Candy, which was the first one that I picked up, all right, again, you've got your four pan and you've got your three pan palette here. Honestly, guys, in these two, the, the reformulation, I believe, is supposed to be a little bit of a better formulation in the new palette. But in this one, I really feel I like the old one better. I feel the old one has got more pigmentation and is more blendable than this one. The colors are the same. Okay, like let's look at these brow bone highlights here. The colors are the same and the formula actually feels the same. Okay, but I feel that the older one has got more pigmentation to it. I was really actually kind of disappointed by this new Sweetest Candy palette. Let me do for let me do the this little pink here. Okay, so here's the pinks. Now let me swatch these guys. Okay, this is the new one down here, and this is the old one. Do you see how much more pigmented that old one is? So with the sweetest candy one, I really like the older palette better. It's a little more blendable and it's a little more pigmented in my opinion. Alright, then you have the one called Walking on Eggshells. Okay, I've got the new one and I've got the old one. The Walking on Eggshells, guys, is spot on with each other. The only difference being is you have this additional transition shade up here. Now, these are smooth. These are creamy. These are just really buttery feeling. All right, and to compare the two, the formula is no different. They're the same pigmentation. They are the same feeling, the same creaminess, the same butteriness, and the same blendability. Let me go ahead and just swatch a couple of these guys out for you here, because these, I just, I love these. And these look absolutely beautiful on the eyes. Okay, this is it here. It looks actually prettier on the eyes than it swatches. It really does. But these, this is a gorgeous palette, and this is one that... I would wear on an everyday basis, the Walking on Eggshells, because it's really a nice palette for daytime, going to work type of looks. And you can glam it up a little bit if you want to, but for me, this is a really great daytime look palette. All right, let's move on to a couple of other four pan palettes that I have um, that I don't have originals for because I believe these are new. I believe these are palette colors that have just come out. And this one's called Petalette. And I was wearing this one in a video last week, and this one is my favorite one. Out of all the four pan quads, this one is my favorite one. This one is absolutely beautiful. And not because I love purples, which I do really love purples, but this is just an absolutely beautiful palette. Blendability is beautiful. Um, colors are beautiful. Texture, smooth and creamy. I mean, I'm just, I'm loving this palette. And this palette can be glammed up. So you can dress it down if you want and be a little more subtle with it. Or you can really glam up this palette. It is so, so buildable on the eyes. And it is just a beautiful, beautiful palette. And just so you guys know, I have 
worn all of these palettes with primer. I don't wear eyeshadow without primer, so all of these are with a primer. And then I've got this one that's called Hooked on Vinyl, and I believe this one is a new one too, because I don't think I've ever seen this one in the older palettes before. Um, honestly, this one, I've not worn this one yet. The color selection is a little different than what I would normally wear, so it's going to be kind of a step outside my comfort zone when I do wear them. Speaking of comfort zone, I do have that palette too. Um, but, I mean, the colors do swatch beautifully. I mean, look at this. Okay, so the colors do swatch beautifully. It's just I have not worn this one on my eyes, so I don't know exactly how this one performs on the eyes just yet. If it's anything like the Petal Pusher or the Walking on Eggshells, then I know I'm going to love it. But I can't really give you a, how it performs on this one yet. All right, then I also have the 10 pan palette, which is compared to the 8 pan palette. Let's start with the Comfort Zone. And the original Comfort Zone was an 8 pan palette. Okay, it looked like this. And the new Comfort Zone is a 10 pan palette. Okay, this guy right here. And they give you two additional transition shades here, which is why it is 10 pan. The funny thing is, is if you look at the, the size of the pans, the pans in the new palette is much smaller than the pans in the old palette. However, you do get like, because there's like 0.3 grams, I think, in total on this one. Um, I did look at it, and I'm trying to remember. Ounces. So this one is actually 0.3 ounces, or actual 8.5 grams in this one. And this one is... 3, or this one is 0 0.35 ounces, or 10 grams in this one. So you are getting a tiny bit more product, even though it's smaller pans, because you're getting the additional two shades. All right, so I do find these two very comparable to each other. I'm going to go ahead and swatch a couple of these guys, and again, the formula in these guys, just like the other one, is just like the other ones, the walking on eggshells, the petal pushers, um... The formula is soft, creamy, buttery. I don't feel a difference in the texture of the product. I don't see a difference in the texture, with the texture, I don't see a difference in the application of the product. They both are just beautiful. So here's that kind of um, duochrome shade that we all know and love from the Comfort Zone palette. Okay, here we go. So this up top is the new one, and that's the bottom one or the bottom one. The top one is the new one, the bottom one is the old one. Okay. So they're still, they're exactly the same guys. Um, let's do the brow bone shade here. Okay. Again, identical. And let's do one more. How about we do um, the definer shade? I mean, seriously, they're identical. The only difference, like I said, is the addition of the um, transition shades. So let me swatch those two. So we've got the dark brown transition here and the light brown transition here. I'm trying to do this so you guys can actually see them. Okay, right there. So those are the transition shades. So guys, this is a beautiful palette. I love the addition of the transition shades on this one. And the 10 pan palette also has instructions on the back of how you can apply it. So you'll see it's got like a daytime look and a nighttime look. And it shows you how they're numbered or how they're laid out. So you've got one at the top, two, three, four, five, six, up here, seven, eight, nine, ten. So starts it. One up here, and then you've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Now the old ten pan palettes did have some instructional on the back here as well, but it didn't have a day and night. It just had just a very small little overall instructional right there. And again, you don't have to use that or follow it, but it's there in case you want to. All right. Then I have two other palettes. I have one that's called Not a Basic Peach, and this is a new palette. This is a new color scheme in their line, and it's one of their 10 pans. And this is also a beautiful palette. 
I've worn it a few times. My only issue with this palette is I haven't quite found a look with it that I'm in love with. I mean, the formula is nice. The color pigmentation is beautiful. Okay, these are the mattes here. Okay, you guys see that color pigmentation there? And the color pigmentation is beautiful. Okay, down here is some shimmers. Let's do some of those. Those are some of your shimmers right there. I'm sorry if my swatches are a little confusing here. I'm trying to do it all on the same hand. So, I mean, it's a beautiful palette as far as like texture, blendability, pigmentation. All that is, is a beautiful palette with not a basic peach, but I can't quite figure out how to wear it or how to put the colors together to where it actually looks really well on me. And I've tried several different looks with it, and I'm just, I'm having a hard time with the color scheme on this one. And at the same time, you know, this whole peach thing that's been for the past year or so, and it kind of goes along with that whole peach theme, and I've seemed to have a little difficulty with the peach theme. Not because I don't like the theme, but because I have a hard time trying to figure out how to use it, and maybe that's because I look better in more cooler colors than warmer colors, but I'm going to keep trying because it is a beautiful palette. Moving right along to the one that I am wearing today. And this one is called Rose in the Air, and I have a little instructional, a little demo that I'm going to put in probably up here um, on how I applied this one. This one is a beautiful 10-pan palette. I love the transition shades here. Okay. okay, those are beautiful. And this one has got, let's see, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one has got eight mattes and two shimmers. Now, they're not really shimmer shimmer. They're more like satiny shimmer. Actually, this one is a satiny shimmer, and this one's more of a like a metallic-y kind of shimmer, but not too metallic. Okay, so they're beautiful. I'm actually wearing this one on the center of the lid today. I've got this gorgeous red right here in my outer V. I've got this kind of mauve shade in my crease and on my lid. I've got, where is it at? This orangey guy in my crease. And I've got this red, like I said, in my outer V and on my lower lash line as well. And then I've got this guy in the center of my lid and in my um, corners, inner corners. So this is a beautiful palette. I think I'm really loving the look I got out of it today. And I'm just, yeah, this one, is, is really good. Blendability is great. Pigmentation is great. Great palette. Let me just do a little recap here. The foundation's okay. A little drying um, going on. It does get a little better throughout the day, but at the very, very end of the day, I did put little polka dots on my skin where my pores are. Um, not bad, but it is $8.99, and for Wet n Wild to have an $8.99 palette, I do, or palette, foundation, I do find that to be a little more expensive um, than what your typical Wet n Wild foundations are. I believe their other foundation, the Photo Focus, was like $5.99. Um, so it's a little up, a little higher in price, I think, for Wet n Wild. Um, it's okay. I, I'm not jumping and screaming from the rooftops. It's, it's okay. Um, the highlighters. Again, I'm not jumping and screaming from the rooftop over these. These are okay. I don't apply them with the doe foot, even though they do have the doe foot applicator. I apply them with my beauty blender. And they're great as primer or foundation mix-ins, but a little subtle if you're just going to use them as top of the cheekbone highlights. All right, so as far as the palettes go, I love the palettes. The only palette I'm a little disappointed in is the Sweetest Candy palette. That was the one that just didn't come off very pigmented. It was a little harder to blend than the rest of them. So if you have the older Sweetest Candy, keep that one. Don't worry about getting the new one. It's just not, it's not quite as good as the old formulation of the Sweetest Candy, but the rest of them are really nice. And my two favorites out of all of them that I showed you today is the Petalette. Okay, this is the uh, purple themed palette. And the Rose in the Air, which is the one that I am wearing today. 
So these two are my favorite must-have palettes. Actually, I really like the Walking on Eggshells too for an everyday, but these two are my absolute favorites out of all the palettes. And that's because the colors fit me better. But the rest of the formulation on these, the formulas are really good and they're really pigmented. So if these um, color schemes are up your alley, do it. Go for it because they're, they're really good and they're so inexpensive. Like I said, I believe I picked these up for $3.99 at Walgreens. I mean, so inexpensive. All right, guys, that is pretty much all I have. I hope you guys found this video somewhat informative. And if you did, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Like I said, guys, if you want to see an all one brand wet and wild look like I did today, um, let me know. Leave a comment down below. Also, guys, you can look me up on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, all under Rock Fabulous 40s. Also, guys, if you want to be notified of videos I have posted, go ahead and hit the bell down there as well. And down there somewhere, somewhere down there, is a subscribe button. Make sure you guys hit it so you too can rock your fabulous 40s. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.